Hello Duelists, it's Tombox here and let's get straight into this video. Minerva, the Exalted Lightsworn, the Xyz, has the reprint confirmed! Her reprint is coming out in the Battle of Legends, Light's Revenge. This is a side set that's coming out in the future where it contains four ultra rare and one secret rare per pack. And I'm really glad they're kind of going forward with this. Why? Because personally, I whenever I see like a YCS prize card reprint, I really don't like it as a gold rare. So to me, this is actually very happy news. Uh, unfortunately for those who actually do own the prize card copy, I would say still hold on to it. And I'll explain why in a bit. And another very interesting thing is how they released their article and they stated certain things that kind of point out how far ahead they are in terms of their release schedule and how far ahead they plan this. Let's get to it. So first of all, I'm going to guess this card is a secret rare because we already have a super rare and an ultra rare. But more importantly, I think this card is going to be extremely short printed. In fact, think back to the other set of the Secret Forces, Necroz of Bryanak. That card was extremely short printed. There was one per five boxes. So in other words, a case of 12. You're only about guaranteed, like what? Maybe one or two per case? And it would actually make sense for Minerva to be under the same setting. Now think about how many copies a Light Swarm player would play in terms of Minerva. They would play about either two to three copies of Minerva. This is my estimation. Uh, could be wrong, maybe you're just going to play one. But I would say this card would be a two or three of. And to satisfy the demand, uh, and right now the demand of this card is super, super high. Mainly because we've been starved in terms of supply. This card was only accessible as a YCS prize card. Uh, except for Marcus, who somehow has, I, I guess, a fifth of the world's min Ultra Minervas. But anyways, this card has been so starved in terms of supply that a lot of people who wanted to play the deck couldn't play it. And to a lot of people that are fans of Lightsworn, they couldn't even complete their Lightsworn collection because they're always short this one card. And to capitalize on us players, you gotta release the Chase card and you can't print too many of them. Because if you actually distribute too many per box or per case... That means you don't get a second round of sales. And you guys, they spent a lot of time, you know, um, putting cases together, like putting sets together to sell to us. And if they don't maximize their sales, it just means they spend a lot of time for nothing. In other words, maybe future sets actually get more expensive or they short print other stuff, which makes the game worse for us. So, and this card is, although a generic exceeds, most people do play it in mill-based decks. I guess like we have like rank three with Dante as mill, rank four, now we have Minerva as our miller. Uh, overall, it's a very good card to have as a generic card, so the demand of this card goes beyond just Light Swarm players. Why not just make it accessible to everyone? Well, there's no real point in doing that because actually they can't make money if they do that. This is just an opportunity for them to actually capitalize on us players. Let's be honest here. So the too long did not read version of this would be by making everybody happy, Konami will obviously not make as much money. Now for the second part, the people that own the ultra rare and the super rares, well, don't fret. You guys still have something that we don't have, which is a YCS prize cards. Although YCS prize cards do tank, they usually don't tank below 200 bucks. So in other words, you still have a $200 card in your hand. And for most people, uh, for the super rare, I think they're still floating quite high because this is actually one of the most practical prize cards available, like most used in the meta. Like you don't see people using Blood Mephist, you don't see people using Ascension Sky Dragon that much, you see people using Minerva a lot. So this prize card definitely holds a bit more value, and although the price is, well, tanking, like any prize card that does receive a reprint, you can see Minerva being like, well, obviously over like $800 to $1,000, probably going down to about $800, maybe the Ultra Rare one will stay within the 1000 range, maybe. Uh, most prize, most first place prize cards usually stay that high because there obviously aren't that many copies of it printed. I think there's like a total of 15 Ultra Minervas, so I really hope that they don't print it as an Ultra because that is actually going to upset the people owning the Ultra Rares. Just be glad that this one's actually getting a pretty reprint rather than an ugly one. So rather than playing with your YCS copies and devaluing them, well, you can play a reprint copy that well, doesn't look very ugly. Now for the third part of this video, it's stated right here, I'm going to read a part of the article. Previously only available to those who finished at the top of the leaderboards in the high level competitions, Minerva the Exalted Lightsworn makes her first public appearance since 2016. Uh, just in time for the return of Light's Warning Code of the Duelist. I think actually that's not correct. I think her first release was in August of 2015. And so it's been at least two years since we have seen uh, this card. Or 
almost two years. And this actually kind of got me thinking. This actually shows how far ahead uh, Konami is with their game design in terms of archetype support because we've received this card uh, in 2015. Of course, it was earlier for those in OCG. They got it in as an OCG exclusive in a main set. But for us, we got it like as a YCS prize card in 2015. And that actually was very painful for a lot of us because we couldn't play this card. But they say that they are... This card is released is just in time for Lightsworn and Code of the Duelist. And Code of the Duelist isn't coming out until much later in the year. And this is two years later. Perhaps Konami does have a huge release schedule that they kind of planned ahead. Uh, TCG gets to look at the OCG stuff and they see that, oh, in OCG, they already have these archetype planned out. Uh, perhaps they're going to strategize how to maximize on the sales and give it enough hype. Like, well, why would they want to release Minerva after Minerva kind of loses flavor? So in other words, they're showing us that uh, Minerva is still a super relevant card. And we got some new stuff for you to play with. Based on the timing of 2015-2017, between the two-year gap, they already know what's going to come out ahead. Perhaps they have a whole pool of archetypes that they can actually revamp, or a whole pool of new archetypes that they can actually pull from, and just draw ideas from there in terms of uh, reprints. So if there's like a reprint that we've been waiting for since like forever, perhaps there's something else coming out in the future that will also support that archetype. So for us to think about what Konami is going to reprint, just think about how they're going to strategize potential future releases and perhaps uh, this actually might help you in terms of holding on to some of your older cards as well anyways that's like my crazy little speculation if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up i am starting up a lot of little projects i'm still helping out with simo and everything um until next time well let's go to the end phase hey guys thanks for watching and if you guys want to see more stuff from mst.tv drop a like and hit the left button over here to subscribe or if you want to check out another video from us in the past, click here on the right. And as always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.